So today we're talking about the 1980 New Zealand film Goodbye Pork Pie by famous New Zealand filmmaker Jeff Murphy. Out of New Zealand filmmakers, I feel like the two that I go to think of are Taika Waititi, of course, who has now gone on to do Marvel movies, which are a lot worse than his way more charming, small-scale New Zealand movies, in my opinion. Then we have Jeff Murphy, who I've looked at some of his filmography before. I have seen The Quiet Earth before, which I really, really like. I stumbled upon it, mainly because I was looking at sci-fi movies, and the premise really intrigued me, and it was done in such an interesting way. And uh, yeah, I looked at some of his other movies. I never got around to watching any of them. I've heard Utu was pretty good. And uh, then I settled on watching Goodbye Pork Pie this week. And it was it was a fun ride. It was really fun. Um, out of all the other ones, in like when I talk to people about Jeff Murphy and I recommend The Quiet Earth, I feel like a couple of them have heard of this movie before, Goodbye Pork Pie. And so basically, very, very simple premise. It's a uh, New Zealand road trip movie. In the first like 10 minutes, our main character, honestly, I don't really remember the names. We have Jerry. He he steals a car and Tony, his wife or his girlfriend leaves him and then he gets in the car and they start driving to his wife but that's not really the point. The destination is not the point as it is with all road trip movies. It's about the ride, about the lessons that they learned along the way, the friendships that they made. And this is just an insanely silly like it says here, the ultimate New Zealand road trip mo- adventure. And that is 100% true. It was just so fun to like have them be on the road, the banter that they get into, the places that they go. I mean, the stuff with the train was all super fun. And it's just these people kind of just like, they're just down on their luck. You can tell that they're characters who, if you're relating to them to like real life people, they are kind of just having like, mental breakdowns they're having crises the main guy i he's just like a crazy guy i don't understand his backstory it never goes into his backstory and they don't need to he's just such a fun character he just yells a lot he's just very energetic he has the coolest outfit the iconic hat and the pin on it and they're just a bunch of characters trying to get by and have fun like I don't know what the motivation was for him to like go on this chase. It kind of seems like he's kind of just wandering on the streets. This one lady, he goes to talk to her, tries to pick her up because, you know, he's a ladies man. He goes and picks up or tries to pick up a lot of women in this movie and she drops her wallet. He picks up the wallet. It has a bunch of money and he buys this car and then he drives it and he meets people. And then they join him. It's like, I, I don't know what his goal is here. I don't understand, but it's just so fun to watch. And I think that encapsulates a lot of this movie. I don't know if there's really a huge message at this one, but um, it is just very fun. And relating Jeff Murphy's style in this to A Quiet Earth, there's a distinct like humor that both of those movies have. I don't know if it's specifically New Zealand humor or specifically Jeff Murphy's style there, but it's it's very charming. His movies, they feel like they're they're lower quality as in like just visually and like some of the just production elements feel a bit rough around the edges, but it kind of like gives it a charm there as well. And I think one of the biggest things that was like kept me engaged the whole time where it looks like they're really driving in these crazy scenarios. Like there's the part where they drive the car up a ramp onto a moving train. There's a part where like the top of the roof is like open and he's like driving with his head out and then the other guy's like on the back just hanging on there's the part where the car's on fire and there's just like these crazy road chase sequences and i'm just thinking of like how they're filming these things and it just must have been like it must have been so fun and it's like i'm wondering in my head did they follow all the safety protocols when they're like filming this because it does seem like it like every time i'm trying to look it's like oh maybe that's a stunt man maybe they did some effects but no it's it's the 80s it looked like they really did like so much of it and it was just crazy and i think yeah that's just something back in the 80s and there's so many there's so many special effects nowadays that the charm of that actually happening and it just was so believable that just like just just kept me engaged the entire time 
And so going full on into spoilers, I don't really have too much to say again because the meat and potatoes of this movie isn't like any deep message or anything. It's kind of just have a fun ride. And that's what I would recommend. If you just want to have just like a silly hour and a half ride with these characters, it's a lot, a lot of fun. And so I really did like the ending to this movie. Um, of course, it's kind of like classic, you know, people, criminals on the run kind of thing. They, they, they're looking at the TVs and they're very happy that, oh, we're on TV. We're criminals. Yeah, we're doing this big thing. It's a lot of fun. Everybody knows our name. Everybody loves the Blondini gang. They like do this crazy escape where they like drive into town. There's a bunch of cops waiting, but then they manage to like dodge him out and then everybody's cheering for them. We're just like, oh, let them pass. Let them go through. And oh, it's a lot of fun. And then there's that uh, there's that family who's just on vacation who conveniently happened to have the same car as them. And then they screw them over as well. That's a lot of fun. There's just like a lot of small moments in this that are just so, so much fun. Oh, there's a specific moment that I was trying to think of that I just forgot. Just the moment. Oh, yeah. Right at the I was talking about the end. The very end where we have our main guy. What's his name again? Jerry. He gets caught by the police and he's kind of cheering on his pal Tony, John, and John, he's just like, they have Jerry caught after he was like fixing something on the car and Jerry accident, or not Jerry, sorry, John accidentally drives away, leaving him for the cops to find. And then John, he's just driving back and forth on this road. It's like, maybe he's trying to pick Jerry up, but it's just so funny that like the police were standing there and this guy in this half beaten down car is just driving to and fro, just mocking these police. It's like, Again, it kind of encapsulates the whole movie. It's so simple. These characters are so stupid, but they're just like, <laughs> they're just taunting the police, driving back and forth. And I thought it was absolutely hilarious. And then the very, very ending where, you know, we have Jerry, he gets hit by a car and, uh, you know, he's in semi-good spirits, kind of, you know, beaten up a bit. And then we have John and he drives to his wife's house, wife's house after getting shot by the police. The back of his car a gasoline can starts to set on fire. He jumps out of the car. He's all on fire. He walks into his wife's house. Maybe it's like his wife's friend or something. And he sees her. And they have this reunion. And then they go make love while the police are having a barricade. They think it's a hostage situation. But they're just in there, you know, reconnecting. Then he walks out completely naked. <laughs> and then the cops come get him. It was a perfect ending. I mean, like at the beginning, he was kind of just like generic heartbroken guy. But then at the end, he was just like, he was so cool. That's badass. Walks out of a flaming car, gets with his girl and then walks out to the police and he's completely naked. It was crazy. Yeah, the Bruno Lawrence cameo. That was great. I know him from The Quiet Earth. Um, they go and he's just like this badass cowboy, which is like completely opposite from his character in The Quiet Earth. Um, <laughs> he's this cowboy who's just like giving them weed and trying to you know get their car parts off them give them a place to stay yeah that was fun I, I did like that cameo and then our other side characters we have of course um claire oberman's character cheryl i mean she was fun i again this is the 80s it's not going to pass that uh that test oh what's that test called where it's like you have to have women having a conversation with each other certain number of women care it's not passing that by any means um yeah she's kind of just there as an object of affection but a bechdel test yeah that's what i was talking about she was kind of just there as like <laughs> object of affection for jerry uh they have this little bit about her virginity where if it's rape or if it's if she was drunk that it didn't count which is definitely not like you know a 2023 thing that might happen uh, something that might be put to a movie, but um, I mean, she was she was fun. She was charming. It was fun when they're all in the in the in the train. I think that was one of my favorite sequences where they're like building up their house in the train after that escape, and um, they're all just hanging out, taking pictures of each other. Then they see they see themselves on the TV. That was a lot of fun. But um, I mean, it was it was funny when Jerry saw her on TV and she finally got arrested. And yeah, and then the, the pictures show up of them. But um, I mean, yeah, she was a fun character. She, you know, again, a lost soul along for the ride. And then we also have the um, that guy with the gun. That guy was weird. They actually remade it recently and scrubbed that stuff out. Yeah, I, I saw that there was a remake because I was looking up the trailer and said they said there was a 2016 trailer. So, you know, I'll watch the trailer right after this, actually. 
Um, yeah, that's interesting. How does it hold up? Have you seen the new one at all? I'm, I'm interested in seeing that. Um, yeah, the last side character I wanted to touch on was that was that guy with the gun and like that that woman who was in the chair who couldn't move and he just was a big fan of theirs because he's seen their chases on the TV and the news and everything. Um, I mean, I feel like he was pretty like forgettable compared to the other side characters. Never saw the new one. No one said it was any good. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a remake like this, th these type of remakes from like old beloved movies, they never really go as well. So, but um, in the end... I think that's pretty much all I have to say about Goodbye Pork Pie. I thought it was quite a load of fun. Um, yeah, just, again, the ultimate New Zealand road trip movie. There's just a, a bunch of, I don't know if it's Jeff Murphy's or New Zealand humor that just hits so good. I mean, I haven't seen way too many New Zealand movies, and the ones I have seen were mostly comedies, and I really, really love them. I mean, yeah, Taika's comedies and then both of Jeff Murphy's movies I find hilarious. Just, like, they're low-budget they're small scale. They're just fun ideas. Very, very interesting characters. And yeah, it's just those little moments. Like I said, him just driving by back and forth in front of the cops, taunting him. I thought that was hilarious. Um, him being on fire at the end, going and getting with the girl. And uh, there's just a few lines in there that are also hilarious. But um, yeah, just incredibly charming movie. I liked it a lot. I mean, again, it was a little rough around the edges like the production quality is not crazy but i think that's part of the charm and i would recommend it to anybody really the road trip is the entire length of new zealand oh i didn't know that i guess because i didn't know all of the destinations that they were going it didn't clue into me that they were going throughout all of new zealand yeah oh that's awesome though that's good to know i guess people who watch it who are from new zealand probably definitely appreciate that a lot more yeah oh okay how, how do you say that Kaitaya, oh, I'm definitely saying that wrong, is the very top and Invercargill is the very bottom. That's so fun. That makes it even more charming. You have that geography aspect to that. I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> that's mixing two things I like, geography and uh, film. So, oh, that's so fun. That's great. Yeah. I'm sure the people of New Zealand would love this movie, not just for that fact, just because yeah, it definitely is. Seems like something that is definitely cult iconic and a lot of fun so definitely happy that i watched it would recommend to anybody it was a very good time so yeah that was goodbye pork pie